So we showed that the false position method is uh, quickly converging to the true value, finding the true root, uh, and compared and it is quicker compared to the bisection method. And uh, for the parachutist example, you can see the results over here. And if the method is converging quickly in an example, then the present iteration is always much better estimate of the true value than the previous iteration. So if it is converging quickly, it it goes very well. However, this may not always the case, and there can be some convergence issues for the false position method. So the false position can be converging slowly sometimes, and for such cases, the approximate percent error becomes unreliable. An alternative stop stopping criterion uh, we will need to develop for the false position method, and we will show an example how uh, how it may converge slowly or, or may not work in an example in the next slide. In this slide, we have an example uh, as a case where bisection is preferable to false position because false position has some convergence issues. And the function is this, x to the power 10 minus 1. And initial uh, values are 0 and 1.3 for locating the root. And on the right hand side, you can see the function like this. And it's very steep, actually, as you can see. This might have a problem, and the root is somewhere here. So you can do the calculations. I just show here the results for bisection as well as for false position. Let's check the bisection first. You can see we started from 0 and 1.3 for the lower and upper bounds, and get this value as the midpoint and continue from here. And so you can see that upper bound stayed constant and lower bound is changing and then upper bound is changing and lower bound is staying constant and eventually we are getting an value closer to 1 uh, and the approximated error is 5 4% and the true error is 1.6%. So after five iterations actually we were able to get a good estimate. But for the false position method you can see we again started with the same results, but now we are not using the midpoint and trying to find XR by the false position method formulation. And in here you can see the first error is very large, 90%. And here you can see it's 35%. So it actually didn't converge well. And we can see that from the second one, the approximation error is getting smaller actually from 48 to lower 17, but Really, at five iteration, it wasn't able to find a good uh, estimate for the for this value. So we we can continue. Eventually, it will reach. You can see these are the iterations between lower and upper bound. These blue lines, and it goes it goes very slowly for the false position method. It will go eventually and come here, but it will take many many iterations compared to the bisection. So for this example, bisection is much quicker compared to the false position. So these are some exception, exceptional cases. Usually the false position is quicker, but in some cases it may not converge quickly. Uh, and this is one of the examples of that. So the, we said that false position is better than bisection in terms of converging quickly. However, there are some disadvantages such as slower convergence in some cases we showed an example in the previous slide um, but also uh, there are some other cases too which violates this general conclusion of quickly reaching the exact result um, so uh, for you know evaluating the uh, result of the false position we need some additional checks so in addition to the error checking maybe the result should always be checked by substituting the root estimate into the original equation. So we, we will usually have the original equation and we may, when we made an estimate with the false position one at one iteration, so basically we will find XR, then just put it into the equation and see the results. If it is close to zero, then that's good, actually. Such a check should be incorporated into all computer programs for root location. So this is very good. And the one-sidedness, side, we said that, you know, it, uh, the lower bound can stay always lower bound, the, the same lower bound or upper bound can stay as the same upper bound. This is called one-sided. And this can be a major weakness for the false position method. 
one of the bracketing points will tend to stay fixed during the iterations and it will converge slowly uh, from one side only. So it can lead to poor convergence and particularly for functions with significant curvature. In the previous slide you saw that there, there was a steep curvature of the function and it was a problem. And usually those kind of figure, uh, plots, when you see them, you can think that false position can converge slowly and you can just use bisection instead. And But there is also a modified false position method which can overcome this problem. And the following section provides a solution as the modified false position method. The modified false position method uh, is using uh, an idea of actually reducing one sided lower or upper bound uh, by changing that value and having new value for that lower and upper bound. If it is, it, it stays the same during the iterations, the algorithm detected uh, that the bound is stuck in some value, which is called one-sided. And if this occurs, the function value at the stagnant bound or uh, the constant bound can be divided in half. And that's why it's called the modified false position. So basically we have the algorithm over here for false position, you can see the formulation here. And simply we will have just a check, a condition that if uh, this IU is actually the lower and upper bound uh, increment. And for two iterations, if it, it stays the same or larger than two iterations, it stays the same, then the FU is divided by FU divided by two. Similarly for lower bound as well. If it is larger than, uh, if it is the same for at least two iterations, then it divides the lower bound by two. And this if condition over here is the modified part of the false position method. And you can simply write a MATLAB code, for example, using this algorithm. And for the example 5.6, for example, and this, if you remember, this example was x to 10 minus 1. And the function was very steep. That's why the modified, sorry, the false position didn't work well. And if you solve this, the bisection method converges in 14 iterations for 0.01% error. Actually, this is very low. That's why the bisection iterations increase. If you remember, it was four or five in the example we showed, but we continue on the iterations to have this error and bisection converged in 14 iterations. False position, on the other hand, as we said, it was very slow in convergence for that example. And it actually converge after 39 iterations to this value. The error is lower than this after 39 iterations. Too much compared to bisection. But modified false position, when we add this dividing by two lower or upper bound when they are constant, then it converged in 12 iterations. So this can eliminate the low, slow convergence issue of the false position. And basically the modified false position is now better than the bisection as well but still they are about the same. So the modified false position is the most efficient compared, compared to the false position and bisection. So we have now three methods. Uh, seems like the modified false position is the most efficient because it has less iterations to converge. Uh, bisection seems to be second in this example only actually. And false position is the third for this example. But for other examples, false position can be quicker than by bisection anyway. In the incremental search methods, uh, which are the bisection and false position and modified false position, the increment length becomes important. And we will talk about that with an example over here. You can see there are many routes, uh, as you can see. And the incremental length choice is important. Uh, because it can be a problem if it is very small or very large. If it is too small, the search can be very time consuming because uh, you need to have very little increments at each iteration. And if it is too great, too large, there is a possibility that closely spaced routes might be missed. So you can see here, for example, very close routes exist. And if you go from one iteration to other iteration with a large length, you can miss these. And if also multiple routes exist, it will be missed regardless of the incremental length. So here, for example, there's a tangent and you may miss this 
if it is long or uh, low. A partial solution for such cases is we need to first compute the first derivative of the function. If we know the function, we can calculate the first derivative at the beginning and at the end of each interval. So if the derivative changes sign, it suggests that a minimum or maximum may have occurred. So you can see, for example, the derivative here is negative uh, or here is negative and here is positive, for example, or here positive, here is negative. Then there is a root over here. So the interval should be examined more closely for the existence of a possible root in these cases. And although such modifications or employment of a very fine increment can alleviate the problem, can reduce the problem, it should be clear that brute force methods such as incremental search are not foolproof. So that can be still problematic even though we use the derivative or very fine, very small increments to go slowly to get the uh, results. That's why you should be wise to supplement such automatic techniques with any other information that provides insight into the location of the roots. So instead of just simply using the method, you can add some additional conditions or checks, let's say. One of them is plotting. You can simply plot each iteration on the function and see where it goes. Or you can use the function value. You can just, for example, predict a value, put it into function, get the result, see if it is closer to zero or not. Also, understanding the physical problem, if you know the physics of the problem or the function, understanding it uh, is also important. So these are some you know, quick advices to be able to get better uh, approximations using the incremental search based on incremental length. For these methods by section, the bracketing methods by section, false position and modify false position, the plot of the function is always useful to get the initial guesses. We already mentioned this earlier. And you know, the lower determinant, lower and upper bounds, basically. And another way is incorporating an incremental search at the beginning. So what we do is if we are not able to plot the function, for instance, we start at one end of the region of interest and then making function evaluations at small increments across the region. So we started with one value, for example, here. Then we calculate the effects using function. Then we moved a little bit further and calculate effects again. If it is uh, again at the same region or if it is if both of them are positive or if both of them are negative, then there is no sign change. And there, that means there is no root falling between them. Then you can increase the second one. Uh, you can have a larger value for the second one. Continue and until you find a sign change, you can continue. Once the sign changed, you can just say that, okay, this, this will be my upper bound and lower bound is already the first one. And between them, you can go as a uh, bisection or false position. Even you can you know, f use the last positive and uh, the last negative as the uh, lower and upper bounds to make the initial guesses. Without plotting the function, you can just simply calculate them through the function get the results, see the sign change, and get those values as which changes the sign as the lower and upper bounds. Then you can go quickly to the exact value using the bisection or midpoint, false, false position point um, methods. So the x values at the beginning and at the end of increment can then serve as the initial guesses for one of the bracketing techniques described in this chapter. So we completed the chapter five. This is the end of chapter five, and you can read part two in the book, sections PT 2.1, PT 2.3, pages are these. And also you can read section five in the book, which talks about the bisection, false position and modified false position, which are the incremental search methods or the bracketing methods. Thank you for listening and uh, see you in the other chapter.